Take a photo like this and turn it into something far more striking simply with the very free editing tools that come with Google Photos. It's very, very stylistic. It's what I call a destructive photo, which means that it is nothing like the actual photo. And a lot of times in photography, we want to have something that's extremely accurate and infinitely editable. This one, I'm going to bring it so much, but it still makes an outstanding kind of a photo out of something very drab and ordinary. So this is just literally my dog sitting on the bed. And I'll show you what this thing can do because it, it's like so smart. So the first thing I'm going to do is the crop. This is a full vertical, full frame. 16 by 9. I'm doing what's called rule of thirds composition so that the dog is not in the center of the photo but down one third off the composition. That allows your eye to move everywhere and come back to it. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We'll go crop like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I want to show you the tools. The tools are really cool and they're not hard to use. This is the erase tool. I left a box of crackers there, just gonna go boom, and it's gone. And then I'm gonna go over here, I left a little, kind of like my massage thing for my neck over there, and now I have those two things gone. Now what I'm gonna do is, say done here, and then I'm gonna adjust, because the one thing here is the dog, the face is completely black, and I know she's got some really cool shadow detail in there. High definition range, HDR, is what it stands for, HDR effect. It's not actually high definition, because typically in high definition we want to shoot in raw, and we can picture up all the disappeared mid-range tones. Now it looks like there's nothing but black here, right? But what's interesting about these phones is that I can recover the shadows. Watch this. And there comes her fur again. See that? So now this is more accurately what the doggy looks like. And then I'll just say done. Now typically when I make an adjustment, I don't like to go over 20% because it makes it just too far from real. We're making it kind of like animated cartoons with the shadows. Now we'll go back to the tools. Let's do something fun. We're gonna do what they call blur. It imitates shooting with a wide open aperture or narrow depth of field. And the computer automatically figures out, oh, 44 would be a pretty good look. I'm going to take it down just a tiny bit. Well, let's just do there 44. And then I'll say done. And then that's what that looks like. Now we're going to go to a tool. It's really kind of cool. And it's called pop. It takes the edge sharpness and increases the um, contrast in the edges. It also reduces the number of colors. It makes it a lot more poppy. So watch what happens when I increase this. So it's kind of cool. We'll say done. What I like here is what happened to the uh, artwork. It looks so trippy. I mean, if, if I just did that, it'd be kind of cool. But the last thing I can do to kind of spice this photo up, blur it one more time. Just go like that then increase the blur. That looks cool after the pop. So now this looks completely different. And I'll say done. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a vignette. Vignette is interesting because right now it's only coming in off the top. You'll see a little bit on the bottom, but it was a very tall vertical. And the vignette would only cover the uh, endpoints of the tall full frame vertical. So because I cropped so much out on the bottom, I'm not going to get that much of a shadow on the bottom, but it's still enough. Let's look at the difference between the finished photo and the original photo. That's the editing tools. And this is something that I could take and actually frame it. It's just kind of a cool, almost watercolory shot, where this one is just kind of like a grab shot. The basics here are uh, composition, rule of thirds. You almost have two different subjects, this one and this one, which is kind of neat. And then go through, open up the mid-range tones, pick up the shadows, use pop to increase the graphic kind of quality of the photo, and then use blur, and which is the selective focus, and then pop and completely watercolor uh, the things in the background. It's completely taken this pillow and turned it into something it wasn't before. This kind of stuff in the old days would take a very, very expensive camera, um, a wide angle lens with a very open aperture, like maybe it would be something like this would be a 35 millimeter, 28 millimeter f1.4. Then I'd have to shoot it wide open, take it into Photoshop or Lightroom, do a whole bunch of stuff to it. 
and then come up with an effect like this, but I've just done it in minutes on my phone, which is remarkable. When you're on the phone, what this the phone does is it actually takes points and it turns them into lines. And the reason why that's important is because I can expand this. I can make this a very, very large image and it won't look granular because what happens in all of these uh, synthetic things that the computer does is it takes what is dots and kind of like vectorizes them and turns them into photos uh, um, and turns them into lines a lot like um, PostScript did, which you would basically take dots and turn them into lines. There you have it. So that's the F before and the after. Very rewarding, very fun, very consuming.